While GTA Online is rapidly approaching its 10 year anniversary, every day new players return or join the game for the very first time. And like in real life, money makes the world go round. So in this guide I will show you how to get started in the game. This guide will be focused on being a solo player, but if you're looking for some friends, feel free to use the comment section or join my discord. Hi y'all, welcome to Los Santos. Anything mentioned in this video will have links to the respective guides in the description or in the top right of the video. We should start off with weapons, because you can try and go around fisting everything, but that's not going to be super effective. The weapons you want to grab when you have the money for them are in the following order. The Special Carbine, Machine Pistol, Humming Launcher and Marksman Rifle. This will cover all the bases that you will need when starting out. You can also go over to the Freak Shop and grab yourself a Combat MG and a Heavy Sniper. The Heavy Sniper especially would be a very good option to pick over the Marksman Rifle in case you're looking for one of the best if not the best sniper rifle within the game. Though it is also worth noting that for example with the Machine Pistol it is a very good idea to get the drum magazine on the weapon. Because the Machine Pistol for example will run out of bullets quicker than you can say leave a like on this video. Yes, that was very cringe. For vehicles you want to grab a Betty 801. It costs $15,000 but still gives a lot of bang for your buck. It's been in the game since day one and still one of the better vehicles to use, especially when starting out. Also, make sure to grab yourself an apartment or garage so you can actually store your vehicles. These start out at about $25,000 for a two-car garage. You always want to start off your day by visiting the casino and if you're there for the first time, buy yourself a membership for $500. You can do this either on the website or just simply at the wheel. The casino wheel has a variety of rewards ranging from a piece of clothing all the way to winning a car. Unless you're from a country where gambling laws don't allow you to have a video game with the casino, then the casino is going to be entirely useless to you. But if you're someone who can use the casino, use the casino wheel for either some extra money, some extra RP or maybe the chance of winning that brand new car. As for making money, it is going to matter what platform you're on. We'll be starting on the current gen versions of the game, PS5 and Xbox Series X and S. Reason why is the career builder feature that changes and also makes it a lot easier to get started. If you're on PC, PS4 or Xbox One, please go to the following timestamp. On current gen, you'll be greeted with the career builder upon creating your brand new character. This will allow you to spend $4 million without even having played the game. The options you want to go for are the following. You want to pick the gun running path, pick the Chumash bunker and upgrade path A. This will immediately give you one of the best passive businesses and allow you to earn money while doing other stuff in the game. The short of it is that you always want to buy supplies and do so every 2 hours and 10 minutes of playtime. For weapons you want to grab the homing launcher, marksman rifle, special carbine, mini SMG, pipe bomb and proximity mine. And the vehicle you want to grab is the Turismo Classic and then upgrade it at the Los Santos car meet with the HSW upgrade. This will be free and you can do this after purchasing a membership of $50,000. The HSW upgrade will supercharge your car and make it a whole lot faster and also allow you to do the HSW time trial for a very easy $250,000 every single week for just simply beating the part time. This will quickly add on if you do them consistently because this is the easiest money you'll probably make every week in the game. Career challenges are also a great way of earning hundreds of thousands of dollars for doing specific tasks. Some will definitely take a whole lot longer than others and require you to own certain businesses or properties. But I'll point out two of the easiest ones as a new player. These are the Simeon Repo Jobs and Dispatch Missions. These are accessibles without any upfront cost and simply are a bunch of contact missions. Completing the tier 4 challenges for this will earn you $300,000 in total. A great way of starting out in GTA Online is by linking your social club accounts to your platform. This will give you multiple benefits such as free vehicles and other bonuses. And also a juicy $500,000 for simply activating two-step verification on your account. After having done so, you want to put on your best Indiana Jones outfit and go treasure hunting. There's a variety of treasure hunts and challenges in the game that will pay a total of $700,000 for relatively little effort. 
the flight school will also allow you to earn an additional $230,000 for simply getting all the gold medals. From there, you want to head into doing the first and last dose missions. Make sure you sign up to be part of an organization before starting the missions to gain an additional $200,000 after having completed both of these sets of missions. When done with these missions, you will have received a total of $1.2 million because of all the bonuses and rewards that you got throughout playing these missions. And after you've done all of this, you should have at least $2.2 million, allowing you to purchase the Kasaka submarine and play the best way of making money in the game, the Cayo Perico heist. With this acquired, your next objective should be getting a Sparrow helicopter, which you can find in the Kasaka upgrades on the Warstock website. If you haven't got enough money quite yet, you can do a couple of VIP work missions. These will earn you roughly $20,000 each. Another good option is to see what currently is double or triple money in the event week. I cover this on my channel every Thursday, so keep an eye out for these videos. Subscribe. As a solo player, there's roughly a two and a half hour cooldown upon completing the Kai Perico heist. You don't have to stay in the game for the cooldown to expire, but if you choose to stay in the game, you can use that time to do a few other things. Every day there's a variety of daily activities that can earn you quite a bit of money for doing so, which is especially useful to do as a new player who's looking to make a quick buck. There's G's Cashies for a quick fifteen to twenty thousand dollars, the Stash Houses for a quick thirty thousand dollars, or supplies if you have a business, and Sky Dice for an additional one hundred thousand dollars for just simply getting all the gold medals. All of the before mentioned stuff can be done every single day. GTAweb.eu is a fantastic resource for all the locations for these daily objectives, collectibles in the game, and so much more. So make sure to bookmark it on your browser, because it is a must have for any online player. The Alda shop, with the cheapest location being in Mission Row, costing $1.7 million. The Alda shop will allow you to do a series of mini heists, earning you $150 to $200,000 every 20 to 30 minutes. It also allows you to upgrade your vehicles without a rank requirement. The hangar, with the cheapest one being in LSIA, for $1.2 million. The better location, though, is in Fort Sankudo, but will cost you at least $2 million. By doing the land missions, you will be able to earn two to three million dollars every five hours or so. And finally, the agency. The best location for this one is in Vespucci for 2.2 million dollars. The agency will allow you to play one of the better pieces of content in the game and earn you one million dollars in one to two hours by doing the Dr. Trey contract. Alongside of other activities like contract missions and payphone missions, they will also pay pretty well. Obviously, the best option to make money out of these three will be the hangar and doing the land missions, but you will need to have the Sparrow or any other aircraft make this a viable option. The other two you can get away with just simply having a regular land vehicle. But if you've been following along, you had already bought a Sparrow at this point. You will want to keep switching in between the Kaiperico heist and the option that you chose before until you have enough money for an asset lab. This will be your first passive business. The asset lab will cost $750,000 and can be bought at the freak shop after completing the first dose missions, which if you've been following along means that you've already done this. Also, make sure to start working on the Dex Fooligan missions in order to unlock the upgrade for the asset lab which you will need an additional $250,000 for. When you acquire the Asset Lab, you can keep that running in the background while you do your Kaiper Rico heist and the active business that you acquired. From there, you once again have to make a choice. You can continue to invest into more passive businesses, which will allow you to make money while you do other stuff in the game, or you can continue to go down the path of the active businesses and get either of the two remaining businesses mentioned before. For the passive business path, you will need to get the Chumash Bunker for $1.7 million dollars with the upgrades costing you an additional 1.7 million making the total 3.3 million dollars in order to run it effectively you can start out with having a non-upgraded bunker but it is definitely advised to have it upgraded to not waste time or money with that running in the background you can keep doing your active businesses and your Kaiperico heist while the bunker and asset lab are running in the background and make you money 
and then of course continue making more money for the coke meth counterfeit cash and weed biker businesses and then eventually get yourself a nightclub to make use of all these businesses that you have acquired the nightclub is also a good business to buy before the bunker if you wish to have a semi-passive business all you need to do is keep the popularity up of your nightclub this will fill up your nightclub safe to $250,000 and will take roughly 4 hours to fill up fully. Just keep an eye on your nightclub if there is an annoying customer to kick out for a quick popularity boost. And maybe even set your nightclub as a spawn point so you can do that as soon as you start the game. However, passive businesses can really get you caught up with running back and forth and getting stuck in that type of grind, rather than exploring what the game has to offer. Granted, it will make you a bunch of money for very little effort, but the upfront cost will mean that it will take a bit of time to earn your investments back. So choose this if you're planning to become an active or also long-term player of the game. Make sure to always buy supplies if you want to save yourself a lot of time as well. In general, each passive business earns you about $100,000 in a real life hour. And obviously combining that with doing other stuff in the game will make you very rich very quickly but like i mentioned before the upfront cost will mean that it will take some time for you to earn that money back but at this stage of the game if you've been following along earning that back won't be that big of a problem the active business path is really what will appeal to you there's a lot of different activities in the game you can do and even if you just have one passive business you can just explore the game at your own pace the Kuiper Rico Heist, active business that you bought, and the Asset Lab will provide you with a stable income for whenever you need it. Personally, at this point, I would grab myself an agency if you haven't done so yet, as it's the most fun and useful properties in the game. I'm looking at you, Amani Tech. If at this point of playing the game you made some friends, it is a fantastic idea to check out the other heists in the game. For the original heist, you must own an apartment. For the doomsday heist, you must own a facility. And for the casino heist, you need to own an arcade. I highly recommend playing through these at least once, as it's arguably the best content in the game. And finally, if you want to know what to avoid at all costs, Arena War. Don't play it. Just don't. You'll thank me later. To wrap things up, I want to finish the video by encouraging everyone to just try and explore the game as a whole and not just be stuck with just grinding the same businesses over and over and over again. There's a lot of wonderful game modes, races, deathmatches and a whole host of content that often gets simply left alone because it doesn't pay enough. I feel that the focus in the game should be on doing things that you enjoy rather than always going for that next million dollars. With the Kuiper Rico heist in your back pocket and even having something as simple as an asset lab running in the background, money should really come easily and the focus should really be on trying to have as much fun with the game as possible. GTA Online really is that game that has something for everyone, so it's inevitable you will find your new favorite thing to do within the game. But with that said, that was it for this one. Thank you all so very much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed or found it useful. Subscribe for more and become a member like Chloe, GTA Plus, Left Lane Looney, Only Fans Me Do It, Notorious Jam, and the Vinewood Car Club. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all later.